Welcome, Cosmic Explorers, to our celestial haven. Today, we have a remarkable treat in store for you. We are diving headfirst into the enigmatic universe of Andromedan contactee, Alex Collier. But before we embark on this cosmic journey, remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to join our ever-expanding community. Trust us, you won't want to miss a single moment of the awe-inspiring content we're about to unleash. What triggered Alex to start public speaking? You made the decision to come out on your own, but did Morinet ask you to, or did you assume the position inside of personal moral obligation? What and when was the epiphany that set your ego free to accept the task? I ask because there are thousands who have had contact, but possibly some have become disgusted by the ego, keeping their story to themselves in the name of self-preservation, despite the detriment to society. Perhaps your answer can help to inspire any one of them. I grew up the oldest of 11. It was a year's mine and ours. Um, but everybody was great. Everybody was awesome. And um, I fell in love with a woman who had a, a child. Um, that I came to adore. And I had known about the kids. For example, back in, in 90, 93, 92, when I first started talking in a living room, um, I talked a little bit about the kids and the, there was great repulsion. Nobody wanted to hear it. And that back in, um, in 94, uh, when I did that infamous video, I talked about in Westchester County about how in one year 5,000 children disappeared. I knew I went to high school with children who lost younger siblings, who vanished without a trace. So I knew it was real because I grew up in Westchester County. So I knew it was real. And when I was mature enough to hear what was going on, um, Morinet at Viseas' direction specifically began to share that information with me. And uh, after months of just disbelief, and just not being able to understand how someone could do this, especially those who had their own children could do this to other kids. When I realized just how fucked up this really was, and, and I apologize for the cursing, but it's the only thing that accurately describes this. when I realized that these people were very different from the rest of us, um, I was compelled to have to say something. Because they're kids, because they're kids. And when you lose a child like this and you have no idea what's happened to them, that trail of tears lasts a lifetime. And that's what it is. It's a trail of tears. As a parent, as a sibling, you never get over it. Ever until you cross over um, into spirit. And then you gain perspective and, and, you know, maybe you even meet your younger sibling there in spirit. 
and then you can put things in perspective. Um, I also knew intuitively as a kid that if this was happening, I, I didn't realize how how embedded all of this was at the time. Uh, I had to grow into that information emotionally so I would knew how to know how to deal with it. I still get quite angry about it though. That there would never be a future for humanity. Ever. At some point, um, humanity would completely collapse because you no longer value life. And this was before um, Mornay and Viseas had told me about the concept of abortion, how any civilization that has done this for approximately 120 years, and that's in our linear time, it would be different for another race and another dimension. But for us, if we continue to do this for 120 years, uh, our civilization would cease to exist. It would implode itself. It would literally destroy itself because there would be absolutely no value to life. Uh, and I don't want that to happen. Who would want that to happen? There are so many remarkable people on this planet, remarkable souls, beings, creativity off the charts. There are so many things we can do that no other race can do. Um, I just wasn't going to let that happen without opening my big mouth. Um, I have I have regrets about decisions that I've made in the past. Talking about this and about the kids is not one that I regret at all. I would do that again in a heartbeat. And when you have your own, it really sinks in because you realize how precious they are. Even when they're being assassins of joy, you still realize how precious they are. <laughs> so it's uh, I'm 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 really looking forward to the jump into for it because there's a healing. There will be a healing amongst our race and amongst all the souls that have been here in the past, who are here now and that are coming in the future. There will be a healing. And I look forward to that, whether I'm on this side or the other side. I really genuinely look forward to that. The time has come to transcend boundaries and embrace the cosmos with open minds and open hearts. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and join the celestial conversation by leaving a comment below. Prepare to embark on a journey that will reshape your understanding of the universe. As we part ways for now, Always remember to keep your cosmic curiosity alive, for the cosmos is boundless, and the wonders it holds are infinite. Together, we will uncover truths that defy conventional understanding. Until our next celestial encounter, we extend our heartfelt gratitude for your continued support, which fuels our mission to shed light on the universal mysteries that surround us. If you would like to see Andromedan contact the Alex Collier live via video stream, we host an online seminar three times a month on a Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information and dates of upcoming online seminars, please visit alexcollier.org. Please click on one of the above videos to seek more of Alex Collier's knowledge.